My name is Lee Wigglesworth. This is my wife, Megan Wigglesworth, and we've been foster parents for over three years. We first got involved with having a foster parent probably four or five years ago speak at our church. He just really opened my eyes to the needs in the community. There's a waiting list of children that need a home in our own community, and that's when we first started talking about it together and wondering what that meant, how we could help, how we could support, uh, and what we could do. One of our concerns was can we financially afford this? That would be a burden financially. We, Health we costs. Assumed, and, right. Yeah. The government, actually, they do help every month. Healthcare was not a problem. All medical costs were paid for. One of our biggest fears in, in doing this was that these kids are troubled kids and that they, they have a past and they come with baggage. It, it's just, it's not true. These children are in this situation because they are neglected, abused, or abandoned, and they are the victims in this. The other thing that we thought was, because we were both working full-time when we started thinking about this... Child care. Child care. Right. And they work with you on child care to provide that for you. Some people th would be maybe put off or scared by dealing with the state. It is not scary. Mm -hmm. And we've had a, a wonderful experience with mm -hmm. our case managers. They are very loving. Everybody kind of has the same goal. I mean, yes. even the state, we're kind of all one team. And I think when we take away that mentality of us and them, we can really work alongside them a lot better. One of our biggest, one of our fears. biggest fears was um, the thought of loving a child, getting attached to them, and losing them. And we learned through it that the getting attached to them is exactly what they need. It's the most common thing that people say to us when they meet us. I couldn't do what you do. I couldn't afford to, to leave them. And what what I always tell them, instead of you're saying you can't imagine yourself loving and losing a child, instead of imagining yourself loving a child and having them reunified and taken from you, try to imagine the alternative to what you're saying if you don't do it. The alternative is a child never knowing love. I've been praying not just for one more child, but I've been praying for just radical transformation of this community. And my prayer is that instead of a waiting list, that when as soon as DCF gets a call, they're not calling any other organization because they know we've got a community over here that already has a place for them, that are ready, licensed, ready to go. My prayer is that Washington, D.C. will notice that we'll start mimicking this, this program, that the church will step up and do what it's called to do and care for the orphans. If you get emotional at the thought of children being left in shelters and not knowing the love or not hearing that God loves them. If you get emotional of a child not knowing that, you're exactly who we need as foster parents.